APT is an acronym which stands for Advanced Package Tool. It is the default package manager used with Debian flavors of Linux, such as Ubuntu. It works with the Dpackage package manager and was originally designed as a front end for that manager. APT performs topological sorting. This means when it calls Dpackage, it installs and removes applications in the best possible sequence according to their dependencies. APT uses sources to find in the etc apt sources list file. It uses these sources to find repositories that contain packages and their required dependencies when installing software. For some packages, you must add additional repositories to the etc apt sources.list file with either nano, vi, or synaptics. Apps apt-to-get is the most frequently used command from the package manager. There are many options. Most apt commands require root privileges, so in Ubuntu, prefix them with sudo first. Some of these commands are apt-to-get install, which installs a package apt-get remove, which removes a package, apt-get auto-remove, which removes a package and its dependencies, apt-get update, which synchronizes the package index with any new information concerning packages that were added to or removed from repositories since the last update, apt-get upgrade upgrades packages, apt-get dist upgrade will upgrade a package and handle any dependency conflicts that it might create, apt-get clean cleans the cache of old files that can no longer be downloaded. This can save you oodles of disk space, an app get purge will remove package configuration files as well as the package. App get reinstall reinstalls a package, and app get check is a nice diagnostic tool. It'll check for broken dependencies and updates the package cache. It is noteworthy to mention that while apt itself was developed as a front end for dpackage, many use aptitude as a front end for the app package manager. If you don't like the command line, use the graphical synaptics under administration to add and remove packages. Alright, um, we're going to look at several different methods of installing software in Ubuntu, and your options are many, but probably one of the most, you know, one of the easiest ways and one of the quickest ways would be to use the command apt-get. And apt-get has many commands, but we're going to, just going to look at a few of them. Let me, let me do a man page. And the ones we're interested in, upgrade, install, you can force installations, you can do verbose mode, you can remove. Um, you can purge your repository sources, you can clean, and just to give you an example, um, you can update if you change your sources. Um, I'm going to go over here, and if I had added repositories or changed things, I might want to refresh those things, so I would say sudo apt-get update, and that would update things. Um, I could also do sudo apt-get wanted to get rid of some broken or loose packages and there's clean excuse me, I'm going to clean there and I could also do auto remove again just to get rid of, you know, free up some disk space and um, you know, I'm not doing so bad on my disk space but Um, anyway, just some of the different options, but what we're interested in is sudo apt get install, and you can just pick a package. So, I'm gonna, this is a free open source astronomy software. I'm going to install Stellarium. It'll prompt me, do I want to install it? Yes. Go out and grab 46 megabytes of the. Okay, so, you know, that's probably one of the quickest ways. Now, of course, if you go to system, we'll, we'll do one with Synaptics as well. And Synaptic Package Manager is a graphical way to just do the same thing. And it's downloading and downloading and downloading. And there it is. And now it will simply add it to my menu structure. So again, there's Stellarium. And if I launch it, here it is. Just, you know, some amateur astronomy software. Um, and if I wanted, you know, for some reason, if I wanted to remove that package from the command prompt, I would say sudo apt-get remove. And I don't want to remove it, but you know, that's, that's all I would have to type. And that would, you know, remove that package. So that's, that's one way to do it. Um, A couple of other different ways, I was just looking at um, the, the wget command, 
it's just what you it will download a package so it could be a, a tar or a zip package um, if I did this and let me add sudo actually the Kino is a open source free video editor so sudo you need to give it root privileges and this would just download it to my current directory all right so it's kind of a nice quick way to download something and I'm, I'm just going to control so I'm going to stop that but just that's just to show you wget I could do the same thing by opening up Synaptic and sometimes you have choice overload with Linux. There's there's so many different ways to do things and so many, you know, it's a, <laughs> you you have so many options. Um, I'm going to remove Kino, the free open source video editor. And I'm gonna this time I'm gonna go to Synaptic and do the same thing. And that, that you know, Debian packages, um, Ubuntu is, is a Debian distribution, so you can install DEB files. The only thing you want to make sure is don't try to run apt-get and run synaptic at the same time. Um, they both use the same daemons and processes, and you know you'll encounter a lock file. There'll be a conflict. If you forget, you know, no big deal. Just remember that if for some reason it's locked and you can't use it, you're probably running something from a command prompt that's interfering with synaptic. Um, you know, or if you're trying to run something from a command prompt, maybe you left Synaptic open. But just to show you, I'm, I'm going to look for a Kino. And again, here it is, nonlinear editor for digital video data. I'm going to mark it for installation. And now I'm, we're just going to do the same thing graphically. I'm just going to click apply and apply. Just, you know, thousands upon thousands of free applications out there. And they're all available via apt-get from the command line um, or using the Synaptic package manager, either way. Okay, here's uh, Adobe's website. Let's say we're going to go, I wanted to go upgrade my Flash Player. Um, and I'm going to go here and say get Adobe Flash Player. And their actual repository is here. And again, this is just app get, but this will kind of bring up a, you know, an online uh, version of app get or, or synaptic. Um, and, you know, in this case, I could select to use the repository. So I've already done this. I've already installed Adobe, but, um, you know, not any more difficult than using uh, Macintosh or using uh, Windows there. Um, just just another way of using apt-get over the web. Um, another common thing you might do is um, install applications that are in the form of tarballs. Now tar is a huge command with lots and lots of options. Um, if I were to bring it up Let's just bring up a man page on tar. And that's a whole other tutorial in, a, in and of itself. Um, tar and CPI, you can back up your entire system. You can you know, restore it. So it's a very complex, intricate, wonderful, powerful tool for archiving, for backing things up, and, and restoring things. But that will be another tutorial completely on its own. However, just for the purpose of installing software, I ran into a situation. Um, I, I installed the 64-bit version of Ubuntu because on this machine, I have 7 gigabytes of memory. And running the 32-bit version, I can't really adjust past 3 gigabytes. So I'd be wasting like 4 gigabytes of RAM if I didn't use the 64-bit version. I haven't really run into any issues yet. I've been able to find all of the software and things I like to use, except for this one application, Real Player. Um, at this point, you know, there's not really a lot of, of uh, you know, 64-bit uh, support. There is no 64-bit support for Ubuntu. But um, if you know, if, if I had the 32-bit, yeah, I, I could just save the dev package. And once I save the dev package, I could use the command line tool dpackage, which is, let me go over here, and and I just want to give myself permission. Now this won't actually work because I have the 30, the 64-bit version, and that's really for, that's the 32-bit version. But just to show you the tool, dpackage. And there are many options I, I can install with the dash i option, but I'll just use a wild card there. And then oh, let me let me do sudo, let me sudo that. And then. 
notice this you know message here i thirty six does not match my system and because I'm running sixty four bit here so it doesn't really support that um but I, I can still actually use the thirty two bit version if I compile it from the source and download it so and that that's what I did so I just googled around and I found the website for the source um, using the helix community player and you can locate that on Google and then um, let me go into I just made a folder here called real player use a wild card and notice that it's a tarball see here the extension dot tar and this is a bzip bzip sort of a, a compression tool and there's also gzip and you can gzip and you can g unzip or gunzip and you can bzip and you can b unzip and tar but basically I can combine it all into one command and I need to get out of Fedora mode and get into Ubuntu mode instead of using the SU but um, so sudo and I'm going to do use the tar command and dash xvf x to extract v for verbose mode and f to specify a file name so commonly I would use those three switches and of course that's a huge name and I don't want to type the whole thing out so I'm just going to wildcard it and this will extract the contents of that tarball and archive okay and then I'm going to list the contents, and particularly the blah, blah, particularly the one that I'm interested in is is uh, the binary file here, real play bin. Um, and this looks like a soft link. Um, yeah, looks like a. Let's see here. Okay, no, that's just a file. It's not a link. But all right, so we've got a couple of files here, and what I want to do is I'm going to run the setup utility, which is the binary file. So sudo, and this is a security precaution. But when you install something from the command prompt, if I do this, it won't really find it. It says, you know, oh. But on the other hand, if I do this dot forward slash, and then let me go, let me specify. Since there's also a real play in there, okay, and that's just sort of a security precaution. But and now I can actually you know launch and run real player here, okay, and let me. Do the same thing here for real play. Okay, and real play here. So again, and I'm going to leave that there in that directory and. Okay, now with the real player installed, um, we just need to configure it. And I don't know if you're like me by default. I installed the Zini plugin in Firefox, which does you know it plays a lot of streaming media and multimedia formats embedded in HTML web pages on the internet. However, um, you'll, you're going to have to switch it or set up the, the MIME type or file type association. So here I changed it to Real Play. Um, you know before it was the Zini plugin, and I just went here and I selected Use Other, and I browsed to my Real Player, and I just selected Real Play. So you know, I have to set that up for you know RA, real, uh, RM, and, and RAM files, RAM files for real media, and then I just want to test it out. And real uh, networks keeps a, let me see, they keep a test page out there for when you set it up. And so I'm just going to go over here and I want to grab this guy, and I just want to test out the player. It's this clip is an example of real video nine. Depending on the link you clicked on, this video clip may be encoded. So, you know, that way I'm using the 32-bit version of the real player until they finish the 64-bit one. But that's just an example of some of the wonderful versatility of open source software uh, and open architecture. Um, if something doesn't exist, uh, you can make it. Uh, a widget or a sprocket or, uh, you know, a gadget or a gadget or, um, you know, you can modify it, you know, you can, you can rig it, you can make it fit and, you know, make it do in some way or in some fashion. So that's you know just you know being able to do a basically use a 32-bit version inside of a 64-bit. Um.